I created five ecospheres. The first I filled with sand and salt water taken from a Florida beach. The second came from a Florida swamp. I filled it with mud and water. The third was a repeat of the second, except it came from an Ohio pond. I filled it with water, mud, and as much vegetation as possible. The fourth and the fifth are both custom vivarium ecosystems that I built. Each ecosphere soon started to show its own unique signs of life. Our journey starts here on this beach outside of Cocoa, Florida. I took two scoops of sand where the waves break on the beach. Then I waded knee deep and filled it with water. When I got home and the murky water had settled, I started to notice little indentations in the sand. I opened the jar to get a better look. I noticed what appeared to be some little sand fleas filtering the water for particles of food. I stirred it with a spoon in an effort to mimic the motion of the ocean. And they really seemed to like that. I also noticed that they had shed some of their shells. I sprinkled in some tropical fish food, that way I could make up for involuntarily rehoming them. Now that I knew what resided in the sand on the Florida beaches, I was hungry for more. I had to know what was living in the waters of the swamp. I grabbed my backpack and headed deep into the jungle. The tannins from the wood and the water, as well as the sun reflecting off of it, made it look really cool, almost as if someone had put red dye in there. After a couple of scans, and I was as certain as I could be that there were no alligators lurking in the water, I braved it, waded out, and got my sample. I wanted to be sure to get some of the sediment as well as some of the vegetation. That way I could get the complete ecosystem. Surprisingly, the water settled in about two hours and I was ready to start scanning for life. The first and most obvious was this common aquarium snail. But somewhere down in the vegetation, something was stirring. It took me a while, but eventually I did figure out what it was. While I was waiting for the mystery animal in the leaf litter to present itself, this little shrimp was fanning for plankton or whatever it is that it eats out of this little log. Eventually, I did figure out what had been stirring the leaves around. It was these assassin snails that had been creeping along. They seemed to spend most of their time cleaning the leaf litter and or twigs. But when they're not doing that, they're definitely cruising the window, which is great. It keeps it nice and clean. An interesting observation that I made was this little crustacean that seemed to want to hang out amongst these two snails. It just went back and forth from one shell to the other, which was pretty entertaining and lasted for a few hours. Since there wasn't really any alive plants in this jar, I do vent it from time to time to let oxygen in. Now that I had a good idea of what was living in the Florida swamp water, 
I wanted to find out what was living in this Ohio pond. No alligators to worry about this time, so I walked out with confidence and managed to scoop out a heroic amount of vegetation and mud along with water in one fail swoop. Since the water was so murky and muddy, it actually took almost two full days for it to settle down. But when it did, it looked pretty stunning as it sat. I spotted the first movement in the mud, and that was the prelude to what would be an explosion of activity in life. These worms started to pop up everywhere, and as they grew in number, they grew in confidence. They did this all day, every day, for weeks. The glass of the jar also started to see a lot of action, notably these aquarium snails and these dragonfly larvae. I also started to spot little swarms of Daphnia as well. After a few days, the rim of the glass started to grow algae on it, which started to make it kind of hard to see during the day. But luckily the middle of the jar was still clear, and that's where I spotted this weird mystery egg pouch, which hasn't hatched yet. I wanted to see if perhaps something was out at night that I couldn't spot during the day, so I used a flashlight, and I did catch a glimpse of something. I only saw it the one time. It might have been a dragonfly larvae, but I'm not sure. After a couple of weeks, the Daphnia population absolutely exploded, and they cruised up and down the glass. I busted out my flashlight at night again and saw these weird worm looking things on the glass as well. To this day, I'm not sure what they are, but they're still there and there's quite a few of them now. Now that I had three little water-based ecosystems, I was hungry for more but this time I decided to build my own. I built it to be self-containing, meaning that it would support itself, so I glued it shut forever. That was about half a year ago, and it's absolutely thriving. I spotted this larvae, which I'm not sure what that is, so I'll keep an eye on it. But apart from that, there's springtails in here, which eat the dead vegetation, turn it back into fertilization, which helps the plants regrow. There's also some pill bugs as well. The foundation of this terrarium is built on a false bottom, meaning that there is a water level beneath. The roots from the plants draw from this and then evaporate the water back into the terrarium ecosphere via the leaves, which condenses and causes a form of rain. I built a second terrarium, this time polydarium style with a little pond, and I also upped the size. I decided not to glue this one shut, and honestly, since I keep tinkering with it, the tank hasn't really cycled yet like it should have. It's definitely still thriving, but since I keep adding little bits of food like this carrot and this yellow squash that I put in here, there's a little bit of an excess of life in there, which sometimes will eat the plants as well. But since the lid pops off, let's take a look and dive inside. As you can see, I set out the yellow squash and some pieces of carrot to encourage the springtails and the pill bugs to leave my plants alone to give them a chance to grow in properly. But this did have the double benefit of drawing all the animals to centralized locations, making it nice and easy for me to get some good footage for your viewing pleasure. I'm not a betting man, 
but if I was, I'd be willing to bet that these snails had something to do with those holes in my plants. Make sure you're subscribed for updates. Also, if you liked it, hit the button. That being said, if you enjoyed this video, you'll have to watch my Rainforest Ecosystem video.